the company has moved in back from Canada and they have replaced the old agreement. Now the agreement seems to be lucrative because 50% would be for the company and the, from the remaining 50%, 50% would go to the government of Balochistan and the rest to the state of Pakistan. We have today with us the CEO of the company, Mr. Mark Bristow. Mark Bristow. So, Mr. Mark, what do you say? Say a few words and I'll ask you the question. Yes, I think, you know, the, the, the project that you, I'll talk to you, the project that you refer to is a long-standing project and Barrack has been involved in it in the past with Antofagasta. Going forward, it's the vision of uh, Barrack and the government of Pakistan is to build a real partnership between the people of Pakistan and more importantly, Balochistan with a, a foreign uh, investor, Barrick, which has always been part of the Rikadek project. Um, but we've reinvented it. And, and today, as you correctly say, we, it's a real joint venture. Split 50-50 in ownership. Of course, the government gets additional benefits over and above that. And, and it's, and it's about how do we bring to account this very significant, one of the world's biggest undeveloped copper and gold projects. It's not a mine yet. We have to build it. And how do we bring it to account for the benefit of the people of the Baluchistan province and, of course, Pakistan as a whole, and also the investors uh, that are going to be supporting the development of this project? All right. What is the total foreign direct investment? So it's got two phases. We still have to complete the full feasibility study, but initial estimates are approximately $4 billion in the first phase and another $3 billion to complete the mine in the second phase. And overall, it's a 10-year project. The last uh, agreement, you know, that defaulted and couldn't be completed, that gives major uh, back, bad name, the project and the company and everything. So that was a discredit. Do you think that you are going to overcome that? You know, relationships are built on challenges around the world. And, you know, we could have done things differently. Many people could have done things differently looking back. But today, we have a better project that's fairly split between the, the people of Pakistan and Balochistan and the foreign investment barrack. And it's 50-50 down the middle. The challenge for us is to deliver it for the benefit of all stakeholders. Most importantly, the, the people of Pakistan and Balochistan, that they benefit from their own natural resources. I, I'll ask you a direct question. You know, there's a lot of uh, things we have said that it's a conspiracy or the company stone the wealth and goes away. How would you ensure that the transparency is ensured? And second, the narrative that the people understand the benefit and what are they? So let's just deal with that in three bites. So the first point you make. Remember, Barrick and its partner at that time, Antofagasta, spent money to develop Rikadek and then was denied the opportunity right. to develop it. So that we can pa pass blame and that's not what we had to do. The, the, the second point is, is the arbitration and the arguments and the legal proceedings that, that subsequently followed that. And, and again, my view is that it's better to work together for the benefit of all stakeholders than sit and argue too much about who did what and why. What we have got is a project that has a better benefit to the people of Pakistan and, and Balochistan, and we are committed to those, that partnership. All right. So uh, just towards the fag end of the small interaction, uh, I would straight away ask you how this agreement is different from the last agreement. So I can. I'm uh, asking this because of the sustainability. So this is a very different agreement in that it's split 50 50, and I always say uh, partnerships are best when they're 50 50, otherwise, they're not true partnerships. And I think getting back to your point about transparency, today, 
this conversation that you witnessed today is about inviting the journalists uh, who are the mouthpieces of, uh, of the people, this country's people. And, uh, and also, they were there to test and, and come with us on this voyage. And, uh, and it's our commitment to ensure that there's a transparent engagement uh, that you and everyone else can hold us accountable. So every six months, we'll come and share with you what we've done, as we've told you today and what we plan to do in the future, and then six months later, we'll do the same. So you'll be able to test on the way we perform going forward. Okay, last question. You have uh, one of the investors, the IFC, which is the World Bank Group, and we all know that on the board of these great and good institutions, there are states. So, so it's not a private business. So there are other states who are on the board of these investors. How would you would you say something on that as well? Because that uh, gives some of the stakes on the. I mean, that can raise a question of sovereignty. Or something. You know, the 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 IFC is the private arm of the World Bank. Remember, the World Bank is owned by all its members, of which Pakistan is one. So, um, so and it's about the so the World Bank deals with governments, and uh, and the IFC deals with private business. And but both of them look to ensure the development of the global economy, and uh, and so it's not only the IFC. We haven't finalised all the uh, investors. We have many interested parties looking to participate in this investment. But what we want to attract is those people who want to partner with us to develop something that is of importance uh, to the uh, Pakistan economy. Thank you very much, Mark. Okay, thank you. It's a pleasure. Nice to, nice okay. to talk to you. So, uh, he's the CEO of the company, and what he has said is just in front of you. So, with this, I take permission to go away and goodbye.